So on my screen is the network topology. Left hand side, we have the uh, Linux server. And on the right hand side, we have the 48 firewall. We have the network 10, 10, 10, 0 slash 24 behind the Linux server. And the remote subnet is 14, 140, 40, 0 slash 24. Peer IP is 192.168.0.2 and the remote peer IP on 40 gate firewall is 192.168.0.108. Let's uh, configure the IPsec first on the 40 gate and then we'll move on to the Linux server. So we'll create the uh, VPN tunnel first on the 40 gate. Name it as Linux to 40 gate. Next. And we are going to define the remote gateway, which is going to be 0 0.2 as per the diagram. And the interface is going to be port one. We'll keep the uh, DPD detection, dead peer detection on demand. Click on advanced settings. Okay, leave it to default. So here in pre-shared key, we will have to set the pre-shared key. So I have a random generated pre-shared key. I'm going to paste it here. Version one, Ike. Mode is a main mode. I will have AES-256, SHA-2, group two, 3600 I'll put. This is in seconds. And this is the phase two. Local subnet is going to be 141440 slash 24. Remote is going to be 0.2. And click on advanced setting and Set the proposal to AS256-2. Uh, Disable uh, BFS. And eight hours in seconds. And that's all in the VPN tunnel setting. Click OK. Now you will have to Go to static route, set the route for the remote subnet, which is gateway is going to be through the VPN. Linux to 40 gate, click OK. Now come to policy and object, firewall policy, create policy. Name it as VPN. Input interface is going to be the tunnel interface. Outgoing interface is going to be port 2. Source, let's keep it as all for time being. Click OK. That's it. The configuration on the 48 firewall is done. Now let's move on to our Ubuntu server, which is our Linux server.
So first of all, you will have to update the packages and the repository. So let's try to do that first. I guess I already have the updated one. So let's wait for it to update the repository. Okay, it is done. Now, second part is to install the strong swan package. I already have the strong swan package. Third one is to set the kernel parameter. So you will have to set the kernel parameter. IP forward. All IP v4 config all except redirects. And then the third one. Once you are done with this, we can move on to the configuration part. So first thing is to set the appreciate key and the peer IPs. So this particular file contains the peer IPs, source and destination. Source is the Linux server, destination is the 48 firewall. This is the same PSK. I already have the entry, but in your case, you will have to copy paste this. Now the second part is to configure phase one and phase two proposal and the configuration. So I already have the configuration. I'm going to show you the configuration. This is the global configuration. And this is the connection that I have created for the VPN, Linux 248. Auth by secret, appreciate key. Here, a left ID means uh, the local side, which is behind the Linux server. Left ID is the peer IP. Left subnet is the Subnet behind the Linux 10, 10, 10, 0 slash 24. Right is this particular uh, peer IP 192.168.0.108 on the 48. And right subnet is 14.140.40.0 slash 24. Pretty simple and uh, self explanatory. So left ID 192.168.0.2. Left subnet 10, 10, 10, 0 slash 24. Right. 192.168.0.108, right subnet 14.140.40.0/24. So this particular configuration act as the traffic selector, or you can call it as proxy ID. Next comes the phase one proposal, AES 256 SHA2. As we have the same configuration here also. Let me quickly show you the configuration. So you can see here ES256 SHA2 group 2. So on my Linux server, I do have the same mob P1024 is group 2. And this is the phase 2 proposal ESP AES256 SHA2. You can check the same on the 40 gate firewall as well. AES256. Mm, where is it? Okay. AES 256 SHA2. And the key exchange uh, protocol is Ike version 1. Key keying Ike lifetime is 1 hour for phase 1. For And the phase two lifetime is eight hours. In our case, we have configured configured it in seconds, two double eight double zero. DPD delay, 30 seconds, DPD timeout, 120 seconds, DPD action, restart, auto start. So on the 40 kit, we have configured it on demand. 
So once done, you can check the status of the tunnel. And before that, you can actually check your IP table to see if you have the allowing rule or not. So in my case, you can see I already have an entry to allow the traffic from the source. 192.168.0.108 to destination 192.168.0.2. And I already have another entry for the outgoing traffic, which is 10.10.10.2 10, 10, 10, towards 14.140.40.108. In my case, I'm initiating traffic from this particular interface to this particular interface instead of initiating traffic from this host to the web server so that it'll be easy and convenient. Let's try to check the status of the IPsec tunnel. You can see here, tunnel is active. This is the proxy ID or the traffic selector, routed mode tunnel established 192.168.0.2 peer IP and you can explicitly list the status of the tunnel using the command here now we can try pinging from the remote end You can see here, I'm able to ping. And we can check actually the IP table. And you can see that the packet is increasing. Four packet received, 152, 156. I can show you again, sending four packets. You can see here, incrementing. To uh, check the status of SA with the statistics regarding the packet received and sent, well, you can check the command IPsec status all. And you can see here, 14 packet, 14 packet. Let me try to initiate some traffic. Five packet sending. Now, if you come here, execute the command again. You can see here the packet increased by five. And we can try pinging from the Linux machine as well. Ping. And that's it. You can see here, I'm able to ping. You can take a TCP dump capture of the ESP packet to confirm that the traffic is actually coming through the tunnel. Let me try to capture the TCP. Okay, so this is filtering the traffic from the remote end. Let me try to initiate some traffic and see, as you can see, I'm receiving the ESP packet with the SPI value. And you can compare this SPI value with the SPI value here. In the security association, you can see the SPI value. That's all uh, in this video. Subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.